Alright, what's poppin' people? We're back, and today, I wanted to bring you what I'm going to be calling the Ultimate In You Guide. I thought this sounded like a really cool video idea to give as best a comprehensive overlook of current Scarlet and Violet In You that I could. Now, something I do want to mention, this is not going to be completely, you know, exhaustive, covering literally every single Pokemon in the format. Instead, what I aim to do is give you an outlook of the most common Pokemon and the most relevant roles that I believe you need to be prepared for, because they're just, you know, they define the role. They're really good. They're really common, etc. I do apologize if things get a little rambly at points. Y'all know me by now. I'm not the best at keeping my thoughts in line. I like to jump around a bit. So, if something confuses you, I implore you, ask below. Rewind the video. See if I, you know, you just need to listen to it multiple times over. But, like I said, ask below. That's the easiest way. I will get back to you if there's a question about something you just genuinely were very unsure of. Now, as a reminder, I would really appreciate it, of course, if you do leave a like. Because... It does help out a lot, and I want to make sure this video can get out to as many people as possible outside of our own little sphere of people we got already. I think that'd be pretty cool if we could just get more people interested in you. Even though this is the alpha month, and so, you know, it's kind of chaotic anyway, I think still giving some clarity to people looking to try to get into the tier would be really good. And, hey, that's what we're trying to do. So, where do we start? Well... I think anyone that plays in you would probably have you start off with what we call the Big Five Pokemon. Now, these five Pokemon, and the sets are, of course, editable. You could change the sets they run. This is just the most common setup that I personally have seen and used myself. But these five Pokemon currently are so good in in you. And although people would generally say that it's Passimian, Oricoro, Pom Pom, and Gudra as, like, the big three... I think we generally can acknowledge at this point that Vaporeon Sandaconda still fits so well alongside them. And as a result, it's a little bit more accurate to just list them all together. Still acknowledge three of them are a little bit better, but that together these five are a really good building block for anyone trying to get into in you. You basically can start off with a, for a balance team with these guys right here. These sets even. You know, again, I'll click over them just to make sure everyone can see them. And then you can, at the last slot, pick really whatever you want to run. Whether it's a setup sweeper, whether it's a wall breaker. It, it frankly is pretty easy for this formula to work out well. And I think that's just pretty fun. It, it does make the tier a little less daunting. And so, you have Sandaconda as your stealth rocker. You know, Glare, Rest is the other moves because Glare is really good since we have no clear X at all. And Rest synergized really, really well with Shedskin. And of course means, hey, if Sandaconda does get status by, say, like, a Will-O-Wisp from, I don't know, a Pyroar, you can potentially rest it off later. Scarf Passimian, because it's the best choice Scarf user in the tier and it's not particularly close. No Pokemon offers as much in one slot as Passimian. Between knockoff, between being able to pivot, between being an incredible late-game cleaner, especially with Terra Fighting. And even having a little bit of defensive utility just because... 190, that's not too bad on the physical end. At least lets you check foes like Lycanroc, take some stray weaker hits, etc. Then we got, of course, Defog, Oricoro, Pom Pom. You could also do Air Slash here instead of U Turn and then just make it Terra Ground. I've seen that used to good success. You could also opt to keep U Turn and drop Revelation Dance instead. Either is fine. Just kind of depends on your team and what you press, what you personally like. Then we got Vaporeon. This is just an incredible Pokemon right now. Offense is super common, and as a result, Haze Vaporeon is just really good. And since it's really important to keep your team alive throughout a game, naturally, I mean, Wish Passers are always pretty viable. And I believe in this state of NU, despite how off how much offense there is, surprisingly, Vaporeon, I feel, is able to get good amounts of chances to actually Wish Pass. And then last... Assault Vest Gudra. This is the most common setup right now because what Acid Spray lets you do is take on any of the Oricorio forms one-on-one -on -one pretty effectively. And as a result, you know, they boost their special defense up with Quiver. Well, you say, no, no. You Acid Spray them. 
And since you're so bulky, they're not going to be able to beat you down quickly enough without a lot of hacks in their favor. And you're able to just trade with them and, hey, not lose off rip. Now, naturally, there are other Quiver Dance users, one of them the Demon Moth. And if you want a little bit better of a matchup against it, you can opt for, like, Dragon Tail with Terra Steel. I think this is also a pretty reasonable angle to take. But usually you see the other one. Now, we have our big five. Now, how about we talk about some Pokemon that maybe you'll see alongside that big five? You know, I mentioned Wall Breakers and Setup Sweepers specifically. Let's go over some of them. Now, naturally, Gudra, we already covered Gudra a little bit. And you can't run two Gudra on the same team. But one of Gudra's best sets is Choice Specs with Terra Dragon. And Terra Dragon basically just says, I'm going to do even more damage to you. And unless you've got one of the best special sponges in the format, that is always going to be forced into these terrible sequences of Wish spam or General Recovery spam. I'm going to keep throwing off Draco Meteors, and I'm probably going to do 50, even to a Resistant Foe. It's just a really great wall breaker. Even without an Assault Vest, you're still really bulky, and as a result, you still offer quite a lot to your team defensively. So it's not too bad of something to give up. I think I've even shown in lives with um, Spec Scudra versus Venomoth how, thanks to Sap Zipper, and how bulky you are naturally. You can still trade with it pretty decently well with your natural special bulk. And of course, since you're so strong and you have Flamethrower, Venomoth has to boost up quite a bit before it's even able to think it's safe. And then we got Bruxish. This is another one of the best Pokemon in the tier period. It's just, there's not really good checks to it. A lot of the times you're forced to use your Terra with a Pokemon like Vaporeon or Toxicroak to Terra Dark. Like, those two Pokemon end up actually walling Bruxish then, unless it techs something like Fighting Terra Blast. But the point being, of course, teams generally aren't going to have a good switch into Choice Band Bruxish. And you've got Aqua Jet as well for priority, so say if a Simeon might struggle a little bit more to revenge kill you if you lock into this and it's weakened. You could also try out Dazzling. I think if you want to try, like, four attacks with Terra Blast here, Again, to lure in some of those um, Terra Dark foes. I think Dazzling with Terra Blast Fighting is honestly not too bad of an option. Because if you got Dazzling Aqua Jet, while still useful to revenge kill some, like, you know, say like an Ori Choreo that's boosted up with Revelation Dance, not Revelation, with Quiver Dance, or any of the other Quiver Dancers, to be frank, it's not like it's necessary. It's more just a very nice insurance option. I find this to be the most droppable slot. Because Crunch... Well, eh, Crunch is actually also pretty droppable. I would say. I think Psychic Fangs is the mo main one that you can't drop. Wave Crash you always want because you just want the breaking power. So yeah, I mean, either of these can be replaced. I've also seen even Terra Dark on Bruxish, just so your Crunch can do a little bit more even to a Vaporeon. So you could use, like, either of these and you're not feeling too worried about what you're locking into. I mean, at the end of the day, they'll each have Stab, so you're in a pretty good spot. And we got Haunter. Now, yesterday, of course, had a video go up with Haunter. A little bit different set, but since we're talking about Wall Breakers, I wanted to go over just Nasty Plot 3 attacks, because I feel like this sort of set takes much more of a Wall Breaker angle to it. You know, the idea being, you don't really ever need to boost, but if you want to, you can bypass even bulkier walls, which I find really useful. I think there's also the option of just saying, you know, screw it, go Choice Specs, and maybe just run Trick here. This is really good into stall teams, because if you don't need the Specs, you could just dump the item off onto, say, you know, a Chance here, Umbreon on the other team. And your Haunter is still going to be pretty strong. 110, no, not 110, 115, wow, forgot. 115, though, base special attack, that's still great. And so it's just a matter of, like, you can... The, move right here, whether it's Nats Plot or Trick, it's mostly just a matter of either option giving you a little bit more leeway into bulkier matchups. But I do find Trick is definitely better in the hard stall, because yeah, it's you cripple potentially one of the opposition's most crucial defensive components. That's insane for you. Now we got Lycanroc. Now, naturally in a meta with Sandaconda, Lycanroc can struggle a little bit, but with Terra Fighting, your CC actually, I believe, comes very close to two-hit KOing with, like, no chip damage needed, maybe just a little bit. And 
as we mentioned with Bruxish, having priority on a choice item user is super valuable. Now, the one caveat I would say with Lycanroc specifically, a lot of the Quiver Dancers do actually use um, Terra Ground for their typing, specifically for Lycanroc, also for like other just stray electric attacks in the cases of the Oricorios, but Lycanroc can struggle a little bit from that angle, so it's not as good as Bruxish, but at the end of the day, you can't really complain about having priority like this. Psychic Fangs, of course, is here because you need to move for Toxicroak, but another option that I like, and just shoutouts to Eternally for this, is actually Terra Blast with Flying. So, this also gives you defensive utility. You know, no, now you can just hard switch into a Sandaconda's EQ. A Passimian CC isn't really revenge killing you without some chip on you first. But also now, you just have a really good move to hit a whole bunch of Pokémon. All the fighters now are getting hit by you exponentially harder. And I'm trying to remember, there was another Pokemon I remember this being really good into. But, um, I'm actually drawing a bit of a blank here. Uh, let me just look through all these real quick, if I can remember. Yeah, unfortunately I'm not able to remember at the moment. But, I think the main use case at the end of the day for Terra Blast is allowing you to run Terra Flying as your Terra type. Because, again, I think one of the biggest advantages to having you know, a Pokemon maybe be like your quote-unquote dedicated Terra user is for the defensive gains that you get. So a Pokemon like Lycanroc, that normally is just dreadful defensively. I mean, these are just bad stats. Mono Rock, you know, up until Gargle Knackle, we never really had a good Mono Rock Pokemon from a defensive angle. It was like Regirock had its moments as being like good in lower tiers, but you know, higher tiers be damned. Wasn't doing anything there. And so being able to just get rid of that typing, replace it with a much better one that conveniently flips a lot of matchups on their head. That's really valuable. Now we got Mabostiff. Now this is naturally one of the most dangerous wall breakers in the tier due to stakeout. You get double damage when your foes switch, and that makes switching into Mabostiff really hard. Especially if you give it a free switch in on a Pokemon that it just, I mean, it just does force out. Think about, like, your Mysteriavises of the world. Think about a Bruxish if its choice locked into a Psychic move. Think about a Medicham if its choice locked into a Psychic move. A Passimian that's locked into a Dark move. These are all Pokemon that are just going to end up having to switch out. And yeah, you want to switch into a Choice Band, stake out Mabostiff's Crunch? Yeah, have fun! And this is another one of the greatest users of Terra, of course. Terra Fairy, you get Stab on your player up. And, you know, very few of <laughs> the Dark Resistant tier want to switch to player up. You're looking at a lot of the fighting types being your primary target there. And this also gives you the absolute no you towards Passimian. If it, if it stays in on you and looks for a CC, you say, uh, excuse you, sir, I'm a fairy type now. And you just smack it up. And even if they U-turn, I mean, hey, take a little bit less damage. They still don't know if you're going for player up or not. Maybe you still crunched. But of course, like I was saying, the big thing here is just stake out. Even things like Santa Conda aren't really good at switching into you, all because, well, you're switching into what base 120 attack, CB, stake out boosted, you know, what was the, uh, I forget, there was a good old little, uh, meme of sorts, where it's, uh, just adding on all these levels of boosting to a Pokemon's attack, it was like, adamant, life form, choice banned, moxie boosted. I'm kind of just trolling now, but you get the idea. It's generally really hard Pokemon to build around. And Dark as a defensive typing is always kind of useful as well. So, even though this isn't a good defensive Pokemon, the typing can still come in clutch a couple of times. You know, think about, again, like, some of the common choice scarf users like Metacham and even Haunter to an extent. They don't really want to be locked into their stab move against them a boss to come in. And of course we got Metacham. This might be the most just straight up obnoxious wall breaker in the tier because it doesn't have switch-ins. The closest thing to a wall to Metacham. Oh, and I just realized, um, the FPS is a little funky with how it views Terra Blast. It always considers it a special attack. So if you just fill in the EVs, it'll treat it as a special attack, even though it shouldn't be. But naturally, the only real wall to Metacham in the tier is a Spiritomb. And you can just Terra Fairy versus that, hit it with Terra Blast, and yeah, Metacham can kind of 6 stall teams off rip like that. And in general, 6 a lot of builds. One of the interesting things about Metacham, and we'll come to this later, is this gen it really doesn't have 
four move slot syndrome like it has at other points. If anything, I'd say it has four move slot syndrome in the sense of it doesn't know what it wants to run because it doesn't really need a lot of moves. You want your stab moves, of course, and Terra Blast is kind of just useful to make sure that you can always mess up an opponent's game plan versus you from the defensive from the from the defensive angle. Wow. And then you got like bullet punch is just a fine option because random priority move is always kind of good. Um, I'm sure ice punch or thunder punch hits something. It's just kind of like the coverage isn't overly necessary. I mean, you could say thunder punch is really good over like either of these because hey, it gives you a move to hit Belusa with or Bruxus with. I, I, I then point you to the damage calcs, so those Pokemon aren't really switching into Metachamp anyway. It's nice to Oko them, but, you know, not a big deal. I mean, you can't. And of course, we got CB Pouty and Tauros. Just another kind of Simeon case, where it's got a surprisingly good amount of defensive utility. Except, amp up the defenses a whole bunch, and give it Intimidate. And the cool thing, too, is since we don't really have Fairy types, you don't have to run Iron Head. And so that gives Pouty and Taurus a little bit of extra move slot versatility. You've got CC, you've got, you know, standard Edgequake. And then Raging Bull Last. Now, Iron Head may just be better at this point anyway, despite there being few fairy types. Just in case you, like, do run into one. Because are you actually banned dual screens lately? Not dual screens, but light clay. But that's a huge hit to dual screens anyway. And so no longer having to worry about those. Raging Bull does lose a lot of its use, because the main reason you'd run it originally was so that you could just break the screens, much like you're using Brick Break, it's just a stronger move. But I guess Iron Head probably is more practical now, just in case you run into some random Terra Fairy guy. Maybe there's not really a whole lot to say about Pouty and Taurus. It plays a lot like Metacham or Passimian, from at least the wall breaking side of things. I mean, versus Metacham, it's just kind of like stupid strong. And compared to Simeon, it's stupid strong, but also fast. But also, <laughs> it gives you a lot of defensive utility. Don't sleep on this bull, guys. It's really good. And then we get to Toxicroak. Now, I mean, you could say this isn't a wall breaker, it's a setup sweeper. Um, it, it, it's still Toxicroak, man. This mod will always be viewed as that weird mixture of wall breaker, setup sweeper. There are a couple Pokemon I wasn't really sure where I wanted to include them in here, because they kind of fill different niches, even with the same set. But I'm including Croak here because I think traditionally we still consider it a wall breaker. And of course, we got Terra Dark. Now, that, like I mentioned earlier, Terra Dark's really cool for trying to mess with Belusa and Bruxish. But with Croak, it also has the benefit of boosting your Sucker Punch damage. So you could have the triple stab on all of your moves, and it makes it a lot easier to clean up late game. I mean, yeah, that's really all there's to say about Croak. I think we all know what it does by now. I guess even Terra Dark is kind of cool into Sandaconda, because now it's not able to just smash you with Earthquake, so that's pretty useful. Also, of course, get the immunity to Psychic. That also helps versus, like, a Scarf Metacham if it's trying to revenge kill you. You could always Sucker Punch it anyway, but being able to turn it into a Dark-type and maybe just, like, Drain Punch it for a little bit of recovery before you Sucker Punch it, that could prove useful. Maybe. Then we got Toxcorp Zangoose. This isn't personally a Pokemon I'm a huge fan of, but I do think it's pretty good. Even still. Or at least it has its place. This mostly comes down to there not being a whole bunch of normal resists in the tier that are super common. And even the ones that we do have, a lot of them get floored by Zangoose's coverage. Especially when boosted up by Toxicorb or Toxic Boost. Asad's always going to be doing a lot of damage to Sandaconda. CC's doing a million to like a Cloth or a Kaparaja or a Berserker. Quick attack, just good coverage. And a Shadow Claw because, hey, Drifblim's in the tier. And I made this Terra Ghost with Shadow Claw. I think a lot of people run Night Slash, but I feel like Shadow Claw's got to be better, right? They, they've got the same coverage, but Shadow Claw gets stabbed <laughs> if you Terra, so. Seems great to me. And. Of course we got Zoroark, a little bit better this generation due to there being really no fairy types in the tier. So spec sets are really strong because you don't have to run like Sludge Bomb, which is otherwise kind of useless, not a move you want to lock into. 
So you get to actually run Trick instead, and so Pokemon like, say, Chansey or Umbreon, maybe even a specially defensive Vaporeon, those Pokemon have to be a little bit more cautious against you because they're not just switching in fearing, you know, oh, maybe they U-turn and I have to switch again afterwards. No, no, you might just be crippled the rest of the game. And Missouri Earth is really not a ton to say because the main reason it's good now is just <laughs> the Pokemon around it are worse. You know, we talk about how generational shifts nowadays cause a lot more difference within the metagames because DLC means that Pokemon that will be in the game by the end of the generation don't necessarily start in the game. So Zoroark, right now, hey, we have no fairy types, really. So it's able to flourish, but say in two years from now, we might have like five that are all really good, and Zoroark could be rotting away in PU. But for now, it's a really solid option, really fast. The main thing, of course, that'll always kind of suck for it is it's manages to always be stuck in a tier with Passimian, and so I can always lead my Passimian versus a Zoroark team, and I can U-turn turn one. If you are Zoroark, I'm finding out immediately. And then we got Basculin. Basculin with Terra Rock is actually really cool because you just beat Vaporeon in. It's very, it's very violent. It's very lovely though. And the reason we're running Reckless this generation now on Bascule instead of Adaptability is because Adaptability interacts pretty weird with Terra. It doesn't stack the way you'd think it would. It, if I remember, it's like a 2.1 times boost. And so, everyone just kind of came to the consensus, that ain't worth it. Run Reckless, make use of the new move Wave Crash. It's just overall more damage, and we're just overall having a better time wall breaking. And of course, like with Bruxish, Aqua Jet just really useful because priority is always really useful to have around. And Psychic Fangs, you need that move for Croak. You need something because you do not want to let Croak switch in with Impunity versus you. I will say we're at that point now for the Wall Breakers, where a lot of these are kind of more niche options, not necessarily bad, but dealing with a lot of competition. So these are Pokemon that you can still use. Just bear in mind. There might be a better option, but always pay attention to what fits your team the best. And next up, we got Claw Witzer. Now, the cool tech on this is Terra Dragon Dragon Pulse. What this is, of course, for is Vaporeon, but also Gudra. So you're able to Terra Dragon, and you actually do beat Vaporeon a lot more effectively. You still resist Surf. You gain that resistance to Grass, which is really useful. You gain that resistance to Electric, which is really useful. And now you just do so much more to Vaporeon, it's not really able to keep up with its wish tech. It will just run out eventually, or it'll just get KO'd because it's taking too much damage. And like I said too, it's really useful to be able to catch a Gudra coming in, especially with how many of them run Assault Vest. And this even can help against Sandaconda. Now, Sandaconda does run physical bulk, like on all its sets. So it doesn't really switch in very well to begin with, but it is still nice to be able to potentially just straight up Oko it. Not let your opponent maybe see what you lock into and then switch from there, if they do tank one. And then last in the wall breaker section, I, I put AV Crabominable here. There's probably a more wall breaker -y set that I could have referenced, but AV seems to be the set that people are using the most of on these like kind of bulkier builds. Not stall per se, but like maybe semi-stall, maybe just even bulky offense. But AV Crab is pretty cool because, again, we talk about Terra. You could Terra into a much better defensive typing like Fairy. And now you're, I mean, hell, now you're an incredible Gudra answer. Now you're a little bit better to say like a Jolteon even with the Assault Vest, not the Terra. You're still better into Zoroark. There's just a lot of Pokemon that AV Crab is able to tank because of the Assault Vest boost. And of course, why is it a Wall Breaker? Well, I mean, <laughs> that's a nice number. And this coverage is super good too. There's really just not a whole lot of Pokemon that can safely switch into Crabominable. And so, you know, it's of course really slow, but it mainly comes down to now just a game of playing with your pivots better, playing with your double switches better. And if you can do that, then it ends up being a very, very easy time to just run through teams, especially slower teams. Crab can have a really good time against those. And now we go to set up sweepers and we've got a ton. Now, like last time, you know, we're... Actually, no, was this? Yeah, we did cover Gudra. 
so we could cover Quiver or Quiver or Pom Pom, because it's a little bit different of a set. You know, like I had mentioned when we covered the Big Five, the set's shown not necessarily the ones you have to run, just the ones that you normally see on those Pokemon. But of course, Quiver Dance or Ikorio Pom Pom, very few good consistent answers, especially with Terra Ground. A Copperaja can tank one and Whirlwind you out, but not exactly the most riveting response. <laughs> if I'm gonna have to switch my Raja in and take like 90 over the course of two turns, it's not really too fun. But yeah, this Pokemon's really good because it's just fast enough to where you could EV to outspeed basically all the relevant Choice Scarf users. Terra gives you that cover against a Celerock Lycanroc. And being able to go from electric flying coverage to ground flying coverage is just really, really strong. Because each type of coverage is really good and in you. The former only being resisted to bleep by electric. And then the latter, I don't think anything fully resists other than Electros, which isn't super common. So you end up with very few checks, and teams often are relying on just these really blanket special walls, like say, we mentioned earlier, Gudra. We can mention Chansey, which I think actually might lose 1v1. <laughs> if I remember correctly, actually, yeah, the sequence is that Oricorio has to boost up a whole bunch, but it will be Chansey over time, which is really funny to me. Yeah, there's really not a whole lot to say. This Pokemon's super good as a setup sweeper for, yeah, the combination of coverage, speed, so that you're not really threatened by much, and also just bulk. You can still use this Mon nice, as a nice defensive answer to fighting types, to Sandaconda even, because most of them don't have a rock move. So it's just overall a good time. Uh, but the Sandaconda does have a rock move. <laughs> Coil Cotton is really cool. Once you start coiling up, you know, you're really only being threatened out by super effective attacks. And of course, because we'll always mention it, um, Terra, really useful. So Terra Dragon means that something like a Vaporeon can no longer just try and safely beat you down because its Surf isn't doing anything. Naturally, it means Gujar could always outspeed and Oko you, but Vaporeon is generally one of the more common responses to ground types in the tier, of which we have very few, but Vaporeon's still one of the better ones to answer them. You could also look at, say, um, electric types are kind of fodder now for you. I guess, when I say electric types are fodder, it's mostly Oricorio Pom Pom, because you're able to coil up versus it, and they're just no longer a check, unless they're Terra Grass. And that's, again, where we see Terra Dragon come into play, because you now you just get to say, no you, and wow, congrats, you're now a worse defensive typing than you otherwise would be. And you still don't beat me because I used my Terra. Also, of course, we talked about earlier, Rest is really good on Sandicon in general, just for rogue status and because we don't really have clerics. And it comes into play again here. Except this time, Rest is just run to make sure that we can stick around longer, have a better shot to clean. Just a good way to make sure your Pokemon doesn't get KO'd. Next up again, Vaporeon. We had mentioned Terra Dark is really useful for checking a couple things. Kind of doesn't really come into play here. For that, it's you, you run Terra Dark really just as a default on Vapo. Terra Fairy is okay too, because with Vaporeon, you're mostly just looking at a Terra type that offers you the most defensively. Because Vaporeon's got such good all around defensive stats, you're not really looking necessarily to Terra into something to flip a matchup, in my experience. So this could be really anything. The main idea with this set is you are terra or you're not running you're not terraing to beat anything. You're running stored power to beat Toxic Group. And all the evolutions got Calm Mind this gen. So you could run Calm not Calm Mind, you could run Stored Power of the Poor on last gen. It just you, you had to run like work up, which is noticeably worse. Calm Mind synergizes a lot better with Vaporeon. And so it's been a really good addition. And well come back to Calm Mind on an evolution like multiple times down the line. <laughs> so you'll see how that manifests for the line in general. And then we got CM to Dunsparce. Y'all I'm sure remember Pokegame's video where he used Terra Ghost to Dunsparce. Just another option of a Pokemon that's able to flip a matchup on its head. Your normal type of Pissimian thinks it can revenge kill you and then you go for Terra Ghost. And <laughs> Rattle is particularly cool here because if they predict that they go for like a knock or a U-turn well Thanks for the speed boost, buddy. Very cool. 
Actually, I forget. Is it do dark? Yes, darks do do that as well. Cool. And of course, boom, boom burst. Super strong move, especially when you're boosting up multiple times. Your overall bulk is also pretty nice on this guy. And even if you never Terra, normal's not like the worst type. And with your investment, it is pretty hard to revenge kill you without a super effective attack. Now we got Farah Giraffe. Farah Giraffe, I've got no clue. This is mostly a mon that I've seen limited to hyper offense, whether it's like dual screens or whether it's like trick room. But it's a really good stored power sweeper. We're basically seeing the return of Zatu with this Pokemon. Where you see Calm Mind, Stored Power, Dazzling Gleam, and then, you know, whatever move last. In Far Giraffe's case, we run Agility with enough speed to outrun a Passimian after we boost once. And Terra Fairy is really cool because, you know, hey, a Choice Scarf of a Boss Stiff could Store Avenge kill me. But then I Terra Fairy, and I okay you with Dazzling Gleam GG. Another option I've actually seen here is I've seen the room Terra Blast and go Electric. And I believe the electric part is mostly just for the Vaporeon matchup, but Terra Blast is kind of cool because no matter what, it is still giving you stab, since this is a part normal type. So it's just a way to give you an actual stab move before you've started getting enough stored power boosts to where this move is actually reliably spammable. Then we got Quiver Dance Frostmoth. I have complained about this Pokemon so many times in videos, so I'm not going to harp on it too long. The TLDR is... Terra Ground makes this have, like, negative switches. It's really just, again, a matter of, like, do you have a T-Wave Chansey or a T-Wave Umbreon? Or do you have the ability to exploit how slow this is without multiple boosts? Because, admittedly, every Scarfer still is faster. <laughs> so you can revenge kill it still. I've seen a couple bulkier Frostmoth, with Terra Fairy even, to potentially take on Passimian if it Terra Fight CCs you. But even still, man, the mon is just really, really good. It, there aren't a lot of great answers to it. If you, if it gets to plus two, just press that X. Just press it. Then we got Jolteon. Now this was a Pokemon I considered putting under wall breakers because it kind of is a wall breaker. But Jolteon, of course, really good for the same reasons that a lot of these other sweepers are. Really fast. Except this one doesn't have to boost its speed. I think the coolest thing about Jolteon is Volt Switch. Being able to call Mind up as a Gujra comes in, and you don't even have to Terra Ice versus it, you could just Volt Switch on out. I think that's pretty cool. And we've also even seen people go Shadow Ball instead of Terra Blast. So instead of being Terra Ice with that, you know, again, the perfect Bolt Beam coverage, you go Shadow Ball, you would just go like Terra Ghost. And Terra Ghost Jolteon is still really good. It just gives you a more spammable move in general. And it still lets you smack up Sanaconda. So it's not too bad. We've even seen Terra Water with Terra Blast as well, but that's like hyper specialized coverage for Camerupt, which not a, not a very common Pokemon. So I wouldn't really recommend it. I think you want to go Ice most of the time, but Ghost I would say is a little bit better if you just want a generally consistent Jolteon, because you still I think always want Bolt Switch on it. But Shadow Ball is not a bad move. Still lets you hit Sandaconda, and if you do need to Terra then you could always still rely on a boosted Shadow Ball. Then we got Lycanroc. I'll be honest, I have seen very little Sword Sense Lycanroc. <laughs> I think the main reason, of course, being it's very easily revenge killed by Passimian and even, say, Metacham. But it's still a very strong Pokemon. As we talked about earlier, Terra Fighting on CB is really good because it does give you that ability to muscle through a Sandaconda if you need to. And the same applies to Sword Sense Lycanroc. Enough chip damage on it, Terra Fighting CC it at plus two, it, goodbye. Pack watch. I do think, again, though, the whole idea of Terra Flying with Terra Blast does apply here. Also might make you just a little bit better as a setup sweeper, because, again, better defensive typing. Harder to revenge kill with a lot of the common revenge killers. So a lot to like there. And boosted a Celerock. Even better! <laughs> you know, this is an even stronger Celerock than CB, which that is always worth tapping into. And now we got an interesting one. And again, this kind of comes back to what I said about Metacham earlier, where they're, the move slots are very, very versatile. And we just have Trailblaze. And Trailblaze is really cool because what it says, what it lets Metacham say is, okay, you thought you could revenge kill me by being faster. Now you cannot. Good luck. GG, no re. 
Obviously, Chariot Blaze doesn't give you anything coverage-wise. The reason you're running it is just so you aren't really revenge killable by anything. I mean, you're looking at this point, like, what's outspeeding you? Scarf Bobostiff. That, that's, like, about it. And again, I referenced you, Terra-type Fairy. It basically still plays the same as a normal Metacham. It's just instead, I have Trailblaze and I could become nigh impossible to revenge kill. Then we got Curse Muck. Muck's a cool Pokemon. It's actually a one that we'll see very commonly filling in the last slot on the big five. Because it gives you another fighting resist, so you're not reliant overly on Oricorio. And in general, Muck's just got a couple of really good sets, all of which lend itself really good to that kind of team comp. Oh, I didn't get this a Terra type. Usually just run something like Terra Water. Because with a lot of these Calm Mind Sweepers, we've just seen them want a generally good defensive typing. Water's a good one. If you get enough boosts up, you'll be in a good spot. And of course, Drain Punch, really good, so you don't have to run Rest. You can instead just get Recovery like this. Shadow Sneak, just lets yourself pick off a couple of faster Pokemon that maybe could threaten you otherwise. Again, think like Metacham in this instance, especially. Even like an Oricorio Sinsu, which is the next one here. I mean, if you're weakened enough, it could pick off Muck. And with Sinsu, I think its Terra type is like super flexible. Fighting is the one I've used the most of, because I think it gives you the best coverage relative to what Sinsu normally is working with. Again, you're thinking about like dark types and normal types is the most likely responses. Being able to have a fighting move, then to just smack them up is really good. It also gives you, as we've mentioned so many times before, that is Celerox switch in. But I think another fair one is Fairy. And Fairy's really fair, of course, here, because it lets you maintain that good fighting resistance. So you're still able to switch in to, like, a Passimian or a Paldian Tauros, for example. Not necessarily very well, mind you, but you can still switch in and not get absolutely obliterated. And Fairy is particularly cool for Sensu. Or, I mean, another reason fighting is, is it gives you that knockoff resistance. So you're not as worried about getting hit by that as you come in later on. So I think that's pretty worth exploring. Oh god, I know we have this set. Man, we've seen this in so many lives of mine lately. I'm gonna have to keep switch fixing this, aren't I? But we've seen this set in so many lives lately. Just Lumberry, Trailblaze, Bulk Up, Pouty, and Tauros. Of course, Intimidate gives you safer setup chances just because, you know, lower attack. Pokemon aren't going to be able to hit you as hard. Well, now I could bulk up more times in front of you. Now I could maybe trailblaze a couple more times in front of you. This is especially relevant, of course, versus certain choice item users. Maybe even like a um, Copper Raja. If it's like Terra Fairy, you could easily Terra versus that, go for bulk up, and it's just not going to be able to take you down as easily anymore. And Lumberry, of course, really useful. Just in case you run into any random burn spreaders, maybe there's a T spike. And you have to come in, absorb that. And Terra Blast Electric just gives you generally the best coverage. I mean, obviously it's not perfect, because an Oricorio could still, like, Terra versus you. Maybe into a ground type on the turn, you go for Terra Electric, and then it just smashes you with Terra Revelation Dance, ground type. The next turn, and it's just really, des really dire. <laughs> but you know what? You win some, you lose some. That's all I can say about that interaction, man. I hate how Revelation Dance works with Terra, man. Oh, my lord. And then again, we see another bulky Umbreon. Or another bulky Evolution. This time it's Umbreon. And the main reason that you see Calm Mind on it is Dark Pulse Wish Protect are really the only moves that you need. You can even say Foul Play Wish Protect. But if you're going Calm Mind, you may as well be able to boost this up a little bit more. And with stall teams, I feel like the reason that a lot of people hate them is they feel like they do nothing but sit around and wait for the opponent to get bored. But this is something I think stall teams should always be looking into. Have some sort of win con. And while Umbreon's primary job doesn't have to be to be that win con, having Call Mind on it is a good way to still make sure that your team is not just left hoping to one day bore your opponent off the website and so you can win with the timer. It just gives you that, like, actual thing you can look towards doing to win that's in your control, which I think is really useful. And then, of course, Terra Ghost, because, hey, Simeon, what's up? Hey, Metacham, what's up? Oh, Paldi and Tauros, hello, my guy, what is popping? <laughs> and then we got Venomoth. I already covered Venomoth in a Quiver Dance user's video, so 
Um, you know, something like Unga Bunga, Tented Lens, Bug Terra, Boosted Up, Bug Buzz, OP. I mean, what more do you want me to say? <laughs> and then, of course, we got Zangoose here. And then another Pokemon I think you do have a lot of versatility with the moveset with. Because I feel you probably do want Terra Normal Quick Attack once you get that drum off. But I think you could probably go, like, a coverage move for ghost types here. Or even over Body Slam if you're not worried about having your stab attack. Admittedly, with screens gone, I'm not too sure Belly Jump Zangoose is ever worth it. But it is still a set that I think is kind of dangerous if you don't play around it properly. As a result, I did want to make sure I drew specific attention to it. I'd say the main thing to keep an eye on is Body Slam sucks. I Ever, ever since we lost your turn, a lot of Pokemon have been really messed over by that and are being forced to rely on pretty bad stab attacks. And Zangus is one of them, because if I'm remembering right, Bellinger boosted Body Slap is on Oko Sandaconda, so you could end up just getting glared in return. And, you know, from there, all I'm saying, you might, you might not be able to sweep. And then we got Drift Bloom, Calm Mind. So, I have Psychic Seed here. The item could be really anything, so long as it's one that adequately and reliably can activate your Unburden, but we've seen Drift Blim on Psychic Terrain teams still. We've seen it on Electric Terrain teams still. You can see it as just a standalone sweeper if you want to run, like, Substitute Citrus Berry even. It is a bit of an underrated pick, I feel. Especially with how Crocolar and that, you know, Stall era has kind of faded away. Drift Blim is pretty dangerous, though, because a lot of the common revenge killers are just not very consistent at beating it down. And I don't know if this was intentional me leaving it Terra Ghost. They all say Fairy. I think Terra Fairy is generally just the best. Because if you miss an Air Slash versus up a boss, if you don't want to just get KO'd by Crunch the next turn, it's being able to make sure that you tank it. I do think that's really valuable. And Strength Sap's really cool too. Because it just offers a little bit of extra longevity to you. You wouldn't want to run Rest on a Pokemon like this because that just gives up too many turns to your opponent. They will very easily take advantage of a Sleeping Drift Blim, whether that's phasing it out with a Copper Raja, whether that is just KOing you with a Mabostiff or a Zoroark, etc. And I mean, hey, Sap is also cool, because harken back to Copper Raja real quick. If they're not Whirlwind, and they try to trade damage versus you with, like, Heavy Slam or Iron Head, I mean, they definitely could do that. Raja is super bulky, and Drift Blim's not the strongest book whenever, but Strength Slap just makes sure you win those interactions, which is really, really good. Now we got the poor man's Rotoms here. Rotom Fan is sort of just like an alternative to Pom Pom, but it's a lot bulkier. But in return, it's kind of weaker to knock off, because you're not... You're not allowed to recover with this spot. It doesn't have Pain Split right now. And so, it's kind of tough. I find that it's really pointless to use this guy a lot, because although it's not the same Pokemon as Pom Pom Light, right? They're not functioning the same way. This Pokemon is a lot bulkier, it's a lot stronger. You could even argue it's a wall breaker of sorts. While Pom Pom usually is capitalizing on its utility more, I would say. I don't think Quiver sets are nearly as common as Defog right now. It's just that typing, they're literally the same typing. I'm not running these two Pokemon on the same team, I don't really think ever. You probably still can. In a way, it's like you have two pom-poms, right? But I think it's just really hard to justify a lot of the time because of the knockoff weakness. We are already strapped for removal options as it is, and running Rotom Fan kind of makes it harder to run the best removal option in the format. Add on, this Pokemon doesn't really want to lose its boots due to its crippling, crippling weakness. You could always run a Terra type that takes that away, I do have Terra Flying here, just to make Air Slash a better move, because, I mean, god. Rotom Fan got screwed over compared to all the others. It's stuck with Air Slash instead of even Hurricane. <laughs> but, you know, again, it's just that is a really bad option. A lot of time, you know, our CC Switch-ins, our Pokemon that are, you know, weak to Stealth Rock, it just so happens a lot of those other weak to Stealth Rock Pokemon can recover, and Rotom Fan's not one of them. But it's still a pretty good option. I mean, again, compared to Oricoro Pom Pom, what it still offers you defensively. The exact same stuff. So Rotom Fan could still switch into Santa Conda and just not really care. It'll nasty plot up. And once you see what your opponent's response is, you play from there. 
The difference, of course, being since you're so much more bulky naturally, you don't have to worry about investing in your bulk. You're just kind of already bulky. You could probably still go max HP, max speed. Given Nasty Plot, just makes you so much stronger. I mean, if we take away the investment, Nasty Plot still has you at near 500 special attack. That, that's more than enough. And then Rotom Frost. Now, the way Togki has described this Pokemon is essentially just Rotom Bow, but different. And, I mean, they're not wrong. <laughs> it is basically a Pokemon whose Volt Switch you don't want to block. I think my main counter argument would just be that you don't really want to try blocking too many of the Volt Switches in you right now. But compare Rotom Frost maybe to Jolteon, where you don't have to Terra to have your Ice move to blast through a Hoodra. And even though your opponent can still have a whole bunch of perfectly fine special walls that Rotom Frost probably won't break through too easily, especially when you take into account how bad Blizzard's accuracy is, it can still just Volt Switch on him. You can still just bring in your, you know, Metacham versus the Chansey or your Psimian. So, in a way, it does still just play like those other Pokemon, or like Rotom Mo did last gen. And then Terra goes for the typing because, I mean... I guess I may as well not take super effective damage from a Passimian. Then we got Salzbuck. Headbutt Serene Grace is very, very, very annoying. And that's really all I have to say about this Pokemon. I find that the main thing that really is going for it is the ability to cheese stuff. Because if you think about like what's trying to check a Salzbuck, maybe a Braviary. I mean, just, just Headbutt flinch it, lol. You know, maybe a uh, Oricorio Pom Pom that does have Air Slash or Hurricane. Well, just fl just flinch it, bro. <laughs> oh, a Passimian's coming into CCU. Um, uh, just headbutt flinch it, bro. Don't get hit by CC. I will say, I think <laughs> it's mostly the last move slot I've always had issues deciding on the right move for. I feel like you wanted to run Terra Blast like fighting, so you could just blast a Copperaja or Berserker. But there might be better options that give you a bit better of a defensive typing. So, you know, Fairy maybe even. I think no matter what, you're looking at a Pokemon that's got pretty obvious defensive answers. It's just a matter of how consistent are they. And we got Crotomb. This is definitely a stall pick. But we have seen some CM Rest Talk Crotomb. It's not too bad. It's just kind of hard to justify, I feel, outside of those teams. Because it it's really, really weak without boosting up a lot. It's it's only running one attack. It's not always the best at sweeping through teams without a lot of prep going into it. So I wouldn't recommend it outside of extremely bulky teams, I don't think. Then we got the Demon Earth Ring. Oh god, Spawn runs a Violite and then it just doesn't get KO'd by anything. <laughs> Save me. And then Mono Player Off like, actually works because of how many... I mean, again, look at what the common Pokemon are. You have all these Passimians, all these Toxicroaks, all of these Metachamps, trying to just use CC on this big old target on its belly, and then you Terra Fairy and send them back to the Shadow Realm. And because Terra gives you Stab, gives you Super Stab, actually, you don't even care that this is your only attack. You're probably Terraing with this Pokemon. Like, this is another one of those guys that I view as a Mon you're likely to Terra with in any given game. So it's not really a big deal that you don't have a normal move. And I mean, what normal move am I running anyway? Body Slam? Wow. How fun. Oh, Facade? Yep. Love it. <laughs> not a whole lot of good options anyway. And then, of course, <laughs> one of the most disappointing Pokemon I would say so far right now, Veluza. They may notice I do have Mold Breaker. I think because of the Terra Dark Vaporeons that run around and the Terra Dark Toxicroaks, I think it's nice to be able to ignore their Water Absorb, or Toxicroak's case, Dry Skin, and still hit him with a Liquidation. And I will say, I still do have Terra Blast as well. <laughs> so I think another option is to just say, okay, I'm still running Sharpness. You know, Aqua Cutter, Psycho Cut, so these moves still get their boost, but then I have Terra Fighting, and if they ever, you know, turn into a Dark type, I they, are, they, they go Night Night. It's worked out, you know, plenty of games for me. So, pretty good game plan, I would say. And wow, that was a lot of Pokemon. I didn't realize how long we'd been talking about just setup sweepers. But now let's talk about some Scarfers. We already mentioned Passimian, so I'm not going to talk about it again. But I want to mention Braviary. Braviary is kind of nice because it's got a good few options that I feel all are viable. 
So Rock Slide is probably going to be the most consistent one, just so that you do have coverage for Oricorio Pom Pom. Yes, you could always U-turn versus it, and if it's a bulkier utility set, it's not really going to do a whole lot if you U-turn every time it comes in. But being able to potentially lure it in and KO it for like a Coil Conda on your team, just make sure it can get going no matter what. For like maybe even a, you know, think about like a Trailblaze Metacham on your team. I think that would even be a good reason to lure it in and KO it. I've also run Sleep Talk on Braviary, because its special bulk isn't too bad. 175 is fine enough. So if you could come in on a Venomoth or a Lilligant's Sleep Powder, and then just Sleep Talk a Brave Bird the next turn, then that's pretty good. Also, this should be terrifying. My bad. Terrifying, of course, makes your CC a little stronger. Gives you the Acelerock, um, ignoring... Again, as well, you could Rotera Ground based on like any flying type, that's not too bad. Then we get to Mabostiff. Again, just because of how strong it is, you don't need a CB. You can decide to run just Choice Scarf. It's even faster than Passimian. So a lot of the Pokemon may be only investing in speed for Choice Scarf Passimian, and then they get outsped by Mabostiff. And Stake Out will still make your crunches super strong. The cool thing about Mabostiff is it can run Destiny Bond, though. And Scarf Destiny Bond, it's not something we haven't seen in the past. We've seen, like, Scarf Haunters do that in previous gens. Being able to switch into something that maybe would take a hit otherwise and to just say, Oh, okay. Yep, you're gonna KO me this turn and I'm gonna take you down with me. It is a good niche. Then we get the Metacham. Again, it plays, like, every other Metacham set. E except this time I have Trick. So if there is some random... You know, say there's a Spirit Tomb on the, other, on the dude's team... If, and if anything, we could say like this. Run like Thunder Punch instead of Terra Blast. And just be like, okay, I will trick the Spiritum. And I'll still have coverage in general for, say, like a, a Drift Blim, maybe. So I don't have to resend Headbutt Misses. Then we got Scarf Honchcrow. Same idea as the Scarf Braviary with Sleep Talk. Honchcrow in general just really got messed up by the moves it lost. And I wasn't really too sure what moveset I wanted to represent for Honchkirk, because I didn't want to give it a shout, because I don't think it's a bad Pokemon. And it's certainly not an uncommon Pokemon. I see a ton of Honchkirk on the daily. It's just... I feel like Honchkirk is a great example of that DJ Khaled meme. It's like, what does he even do? It's kind of me with Honchkirk. I think Scarf is probably what I've seen the most of, because we'll see just like Moxie Night Slash spam through teams and just kind of pick up wins that way. It does have U-turn. Yeah, it's just kind of dire. Rotom. Rotom's a Pokemon's picked up in usage a little bit lately. I think because of Trick, being able to be a really consistent lure for like Gudra, Chansey, Umbreon is quite nice. And we've seen the set in previous NUs, so it's not too hard to understand. Again, you're just full switching the whole game. It's not a super strong Mon. Electric Ghost is really good coverage. And so it's usually able to still make some progress. Yo, and then we got Billy, and I'm kind of thinking Billy might just be better Braviary for Scarf sets. <laughs> Mostly because it's faster and stronger. It's even faster like Mabostiff. Billy's like one of... The, I think Billy just is the fastest Scarfer, right? Out of the ones we've done at 92. One point faster than Metacham. Let's go. So that's really where Billy's niche is coming from, guys, right? Like... You're just a little bit faster than all the other ones, so some guy could EV for up to Rotom even and get surprised when the Billy outspeeds and Oko's them with Hustle Brave Bird. This is not a common Pokemon by any means, although it probably has some niche. Hustle just makes it so inconsistent compared to, say, Braviary or even Honchkrow, and it's often just not worth running for that reason alone. Braviary is still insanely strong. It's still got more than fast enough to serve for what you need it to do. And Billy's oftentimes just out here either KOing itself or missing and getting KO'd in return. <laughs> I think I even have a live where I won a game because Billy went for Brave Bird and missed. So that's funny. Then we got Hazard Setters. Now, again, not going to talk about Santa Cotta here because we already did. Chansey, we already know what it does. It's special Blob. No special attacker is beating Chansey unless it sets up to like plus six. And even then, Chansey might have something to say about that. Terra Fairy so that you aren't weak to fighting moves anymore. Fairy is also just such a great defensive typing that you're not upset about gaining a couple weaknesses. Standard stuff. Copper Raja, it lost multiple good coverage moves. 
but Heavy Slam Earthquake Whirlwind is still a very good setup. Not too many Pokemon are taking this on outside of like Oricorio. And something we've seen as well, I've recorded with this set, is play rough here with Sheer Force and Iron Head and then Terra Fairy. Just gives you a way to be more proactive against the fighting types that may try to switch in versus you. And it's not too bad of a set, all things considered. And we got <laughs> Stealthrock the Dunce Pars with Coil. Basically just taking on that notion that Paralysis Spam is very, very, very strong. And tapping into that to its entirety. And I mean, hey, you run into a team without a Ghost type? I mean, the Dunce Pars could end up sweeping with Coil. Not too bad. And we got Lead Lycanroc here. I mean, again, this Pokemon's goal... Maybe even Terra Ghost is worth considering just to spin block. But yeah, this Pokemon's whole goal, set Stealth Rock up, prevent setup attempts, potentially take something down low with Endeavor, maybe even pick something off with a Cellar Rock. Very, very standard stuff. Then here's Muck, and this is the most common set for Muck, I would say, right now, just T-Spikes Protect. Of course, Protect is huge because you get to scout Terra. T-Spikes are really good because even though... I mean, we don't have a lot of grounded poisons. Frankly, the most common grounded poison is just Muck itself. Quillfish is pretty uncommon. Seviper is not real. Skuntank even is really uncommon too. Swalot's not real. Toxicroak? Toxicroak is honestly not even that common because of how many other poisons we have. And so T-Spikes, generally, you'll be able to keep them up in a game. The only thing you're really worried about is running into a Muck itself. But as I was mentioning earlier, Muck fits into this big five up here really quite well. Mostly because of the pressure that it takes off of your Oricorio and then like even your Gudra. You know, you can help take fighting type moves for this, and you can even help take some special attacks for the Gudra. And T-Spikes are also just always pretty nice. And at a generation where hazard control is kind of bad, T-Spikes are honestly really strong. And naturally, again, I just want to like explain this real quick. We're running leftovers instead of the Black Sludge, because if you have to Terra, you probably don't want to be taking damage. And then a newer Stealth Rock setter from this generation, Berserker. It actually got Stealth Rock. So it, it can give some competition to Kappa Raja, mostly because of its access to U-Turn. Being able to set Stealth Rock and then pivot out the next turn is pretty cool, especially if you have an Oricorio come in versus you, looking to just defog them away immediately. You could say, okay, bye-bye and then bring in, you know, like, your Specs Gujar or something. The main issue, of course, with this one will be it's a little, it's not as bulky. And so I oftentimes don't really value it nearly as much as I do Copper Raja. And since it doesn't have Whirlwind or really any good way to take on Oricorio, Pom Pom, if it is a Quiver Dance set, uh, just good night. Just say night night. And now we got Cloth. This is like, Again, defensive rock types, never really any good. Cloth is not too bad in Inu. Regenerator always allows a Pokemon to have some sort of niche. Having knockoff is also always going to give you a niche. I think the main thing has just been, as the tier has become a lot more defined, we've seen a lot more centralization towards Sandaconda and Copper Rajas to Stealth Rock Setters, which are just better. You know, whether it's Cassandra Conda could spam Glare a whole bunch and just stick around the entirety of games with Rest, or whether it's because Copper Raja is just a lot harder to take advantage of due to Whirlwind, and she's generally a better Pokemon than most things in the tier through its stats. And I mean, back to the point about like T Spikes Absorbing, you can go Terra Poison just fine on Cloth. Terra Ghost is again there for both the CC immunity and to potentially spin block, but Poison's not too bad if you're worried about T Spikes. And we got Masquerain. I mean, Sticky Web isn't very common at all, but it's probably the best setter in the tier. Nothing else learns it anyway. Nothing that I'll acknowledge, at least. Nothing at all that I will acknowledge, at least. <laughs> and Quiver Dance lets you, like, even act as a potential, like, setup Pokemon. You get your webs up, maybe your opponent misses an attack, and then you quiver the next turn with your Sash still intact. Just gives you another option. Um, alright, so Quillfish, I'll be honest, I had no clue what to do for the EVs. I ran, I tried using this Pokemon once, and then I realized it loses to every fighting type in the tier. So why would I use Quillfish? But, hey, it's another supplier of spikes, potentially. It still does learn T-Wave, so it can spread paralysis. It even learns T-Spikes, and is a T-Spikes absorber in its own right. So, 
there are options here. It learns a lot of useful moves. You got like, like a debond. You've got taunt. As we had, oh yeah, it sells toxic. As we ran in a live a couple weeks ago, you can run swords dance. It's just, it's just kind of, it's just kind of dire, man. That's all I could say. That's all I really have to say for Mr. Quillfish. Maybe not the best spike setter in the format here, though. Vespa Quinn. Which is something I don't think anyone ever thought they'd be having to say. But, yeah. Terra has helped this Pokemon a whole bunch. Because you can just get rid of your weakness to Stealth Rock. Go Terra Ghost, you're still a great switch into Passimian and the other fighting types. You have Toxic, so you can just bother the ever-living hell out of teams. Because most of the Pokemon that would switch into Toxic aren't really that great at threatening Vespa Quinn. The only one really that I'd recommend is like Muck. And kind of Toxicroak too. The issue for Toxicroak is... <laughs> I'm sure there's a Vespaquin set out there that runs Air Slash. Somehow fits it on there. That could be a little dicey for you. The Pokemon's just really good at sticking around. He just bothering teams. Even Pressure's really good. Because you make those fighters run out of their close combat power points really quickly. Next up is Whiskash. Just kind of an alternative suicide lead. Not a whole lot to say here. It, it got both Stealth Rock and Spikes this gen. If, if you want to, like, go full-on to the Hazard stack offense, this is probably your best bet. Now we got Spike's Cacturn. Now there are a couple ways you can do Cacturn. I am showcasing the Mixed set because I think that's what I've heard most people are using. Terra Fairy is probably best here just to make Passimian's life a little bit less pleasant. But of course, Leaf Storm could potentially do a ton of damage to, I mean, say, a Passimian. It's going to do more than a Seed Bomb would. Sucker Punch, just nice to pick off Pokemon that are faster than you. Drain Punch keeps you from getting KO'd. It's a very elementary way of explaining this, but honestly, this is a very elementary Pokemon to use. And of course, Cacturn actually having a niche in you right now, entirely due to typing plus Water Absorb. It is a Bruxish answer. Bruxish has to either tech like Fighting Terra Blast onto its set or like Ice Fang. Neither of which is overly optimal to have that Cacturn matchup not be di just dire beyond dire. Um, another set that you can run, and this is what I used, of course, in yesterday's live. Spikes with Sword Stance and two attacks. Naturally, not with those EVs though. <laughs> let me have let me have some real EVs real quick. Thank you, game. But something like this definitely works. You could probably even go like Black Glasses as your item here. Maybe even Lum. The options are endless. And then we got Camerupt, just as the last one. This Pokemon, it got a little bit of use in the first few days of NU, but it, it's pretty much just fallen to the side now. I'd say the main reason for that is we don't... Blocking Volt Switch, I feel people are just kind of accepting isn't as important as it could otherwise be. And since Sandaconda is so much better of a ground type anyway, for overall just use, people gravitate towards that if they at least want the ground type. Camera up's main niche, I would say, comes from that it is kind of a check. Or it's like a better check to the Volt Switch users, at least. It's a lot easier to invest in its special bulk. Its typing means it's at least not weak to, say, Rotom Frost's Blizzard. And Jolteon, as we mentioned with Jolteon, has to really go out of its way to tech into its moveset, Terra Blast Water. So you're usually not that worried about it. Which, at least lets Camera Up have some sort of niche. I'd say the main issue still just comes down to, uh, why am I using Camera Up over Jolteon? Also, Vaporeon is just being given free real estate. Which is kind of unfortunate. But it is what it is. And then last, well, second to last. Also, let me turn this. I know this is like really late to turn that down at all, but I'll turn it down a little bit just in the hopes. Last up, though, we've got our hazard movers. Already talked about Orticorio Pom Pom, but we got Braviary. Physically defensive Braviary is like kind of cool. It takes on Sandaconda a little bit better than other sets would. It's not as weak to getting Revenge Code by a Passimian as maybe other Braviary sets would be. It's kind it's like just kind of a check to some of the fighters, really, is the best way I could describe this. Which isn't necessarily still the most glowing review. But 
I don't know why I clicked to that tab. <laughs> but it, it's still an okay Pokemon, I would say. I feel like Defog Braviary, and Braviary in general, has kind of fallen off, with Oricorio Pom Pom really solidifying its spot at the top of the meta. So, use at your own risk. And then we actually do have a Defog Frostmoth set. This is just generically really bulky as a special wall, and so it's not too bad of an option to try and tap into. It's definitely a very serviceable option. Your Terra type, I mean, usually you're just going to see Steel or Fairy. You're just looking for something that's better defensively than Ice Bug. That lets you make better use of Ice Scales. Now we got Drift Glim. I think this Mon kind of isn't the greatest as a Defogger, but it's one of our few options, and Willow Hex plus Strength Sap is just really good at forcing switches. Sandaconda doesn't really want to have to try and risk that sequence either, because Hex will beat it down very quickly if it does not get lucky with Shed Skin. And of course, you're a pretty good answer to the fighting types. Main caveat, of course, being that if you ever Strength Sap up a Simeon, it's a little bit unhappy, but is what it is. Now we're going to get to, like, options that really you probably shouldn't be using, but they do exist. Um, Hatchrim's not too bad with Magic Bounce. I've seen it on some stall. It's just, again, it's one of those, like, super knockoff weak options, and I don't really like it for that reason. Lorantis just gives too many free turns to Pokemon that are at the very top of the meta, in particular, Oricorio and Gudra. And then Quaxwell is just terrible. Don't use this Pokemon. I see people trying to rate this as, like, B+, plus or A-, minus because it has Rapid Spin and Recovery, and I just don't dig that. This Mon doesn't do anything. Its stats are just really bad, and every time I have run into a Quaxwell on the ladder, have you seen it do Jack Diddly? Have we seen a Quaxwell do anything other than, like, Rapid Spin and Roost and eventually die? I don't think so. I really don't think so. And then, okay, so, Stall. What I wanted to do is acknowledge Stall. It's kind of fallen off, I want to say, lately. The main issue for Stall being that the offense meta is really in full force right now, and there's just so many random, like, wall breakers slash setup sweepers slash random Terra techs that Stall really does struggle to gain that foothold in the meta right now. That it had for, honestly, like, the first week, it wasn't too bad. It's just people have explored so much now and realized there's so many options at their disposal that building a consistent stall can be kind of difficult. Um, shoutouts to Crocolar for being the face of stall at the very least. It's it's doing its best, man. It, it really is. But I think it's going to be it for this guide, guys. I hope you all did enjoy this. I hope that you learned a little bit of something about Inu. I hope if you weren't too into Inu before watching this, that this video gives you a reason to try it out. As I said... Ask any questions below that you do have. I will be more than happy to answer them. And yeah, that's it for me. Um, thank you all for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace.